The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to today's training webinar with your host, Craig Proctor. Well, thank you very much, Andrea. Uh, today, we are going to talk about effective lead generation uh, using online vehicles, uh, including Facebook, uh, Kijiji, Craigslist, Backpage, and more. And to help me do this today is my good friend and uh, fellow coach, Mr. Rick Brash from Calgary. Rick, how are you doing today? I'm great, Craig. Thank you for inviting me. This is, um, this is a great conversation that I think we should be having with our coaching members. It's very relevant to lead generation, so I'm excited to do this with you today. Well, you and I have actually been working on this, uh, yes, not for a day, but for, for a, quite a while. Yes. And uh, you've, you've sort of grabbed onto Facebook, um, well, I guess many years ago. You were one of the first guys to experiment with it and uh, do everything wrong in the beginning and kind of figure it out. And the difficulty with uh, Facebook is they, and all these uh, online vehicles really, is they change the rules all the time. Oh, yeah. So, um, you know, this is not something that we can just talk about once and it's done. Uh, like every three or four months, um, things change. So we're going to talk about how things have changed. Um, uh, very quickly, um, if we um, talk about Craigslist, uh, Craigslist um, was great in the beginning for all of our members. Oh, boy. And, it, and yeah. because it was so fantastic for realtors, guess what happened? Many, many realtors started to use it. And then it became not so great because everybody was using it. And then Craig li Craigslist changed the rules. Right. And they said you can no longer have a live link. Right. And uh, so um, many realtors have abandoned Craigslist, and they think, well, I can't use it. Now, we're going to show you today how you can use Craigslist, and we're going to show you some of the changes that Facebook has made and how to do this properly. It's really not that difficult. That's the point that Rick wants to make here today. Um, we, I don't think we need to spend a lot of time convincing you that that Facebook attracts a lot of eyeballs. Uh, you can see on the screen now, it's a billion users. Is that correct? A billion? Yeah, yeah. Worldwide, there's a billion people now that use Facebook on a regular, on a regular basis. And I'm, I'm sure Mr. Zuckerberg is very thrilled about that in light of his weekly paycheck, Craig. But at the end of the day, it, it is social media, and social indicates people coming together and using the media for whatever. And one of those whatevers that we can use as, as entrepreneurial, forward-thinking, lead generation real estate agents is putting an ad in front of that social group locally, attracting the interests of buyers and sellers who, through other medias, identify themselves, and creating a constant lead flow from this medium. And that's the other thing, Craig, that we really want to emphasize today is that Facebook is just another media choice. It's not the be-all, end-all. It's not the only one you should be using. When you look at that 3M formula that Craig has taught you, one of the M's is a choice of media. And there's tons of medias, right, Craig? In your marketplace, all kinds of media channels that you can be using for your ads. Facebook is just one of them. And I'll, I'll tell you what, Craig, before we dive into this, you and I were talking about this yesterday. Facebook, if we're not careful, can be a huge time gobbler in your day. So be aware of that, too. You can spend and waste a lot of time on, on Facebook. Yeah, that's a major point, Rick. Um, Rick and I, our entire coaching staff, we only want you to spend time on things that you can track back to money. Okay, we don't want you messing around with, with any of this uh, unless it makes you money. And some of them are going to work far better than others. And the idea here, as Rick just mentioned, is, is we don't guess at what's, what's going to work the best in, in this business. We, uh, we test. Okay, we right. test the different ads and we test the different places to run them. And uh, then once you figure out which ads work best in which mediums, what you want to do is build a fence around it. So, for example, you don't have to be the one as the rainmaker to place the ads. Okay, now I do believe as the rainmaker you should be involved in creating the ads, and we're going to show you how to do that today and testing them up. But once you've figured out what works, it's just rinse and repeat like everything else we teach. Correct, correct. So it could be, well, in, in my case, it could be uh, my teenage kids. They, they're on Facebook anyway. 
may, may as well pay them to do it. <laughs> but um, yeah. except for my, my daughter's not on Facebook anymore, Rick, because as soon as she found that grandma was on Facebook, she was out of there. Oh, yeah. 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 So um, <laughs> but that shows you how popular it is. I mean, my mom is on Facebook. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, let's let's get into this. Now, we're going to recommend that you ask questions. Okay, this is live. Uh, we want to take as many questions as we can, so you can type your questions into chat. Maybe we'll have uh, an opportunity to take some audio questions as well. So, so go ahead and do that. And I'm going to hand it over to Rick here. And uh, Rick, is it okay if I just interrupt you every once in a while to make a point? Yeah. So before you leave, Craig, let's let's re-highlight for our members the value of really bringing your 3M formula into the marketing strategy. So this slide here, Craig, is, is, is designed to illustrate what the 3M formula is all about. So Craig, tell everybody again what the 3Ms are in your marketing strategy. Okay, to be an effective marketing, think of three plates that you have to have spinning in your business simultaneously. You have to be spinning these three plates. One of the, the plates or one of the pillars is the ad. Okay, we the message or the ad, and, and we um, we usually only focus on that. Most real estate agents they talk about their ad. You know, I need a better ad. But it is true that you could have the best ad in the world, but if that ad is targeted at the wrong people, it's not going to work. So even the be world's best marketing message shouted at the wrong people will fall on deaf ears. So that brings us to our marketplace, and that's what we're testing with Facebook and Craigslist and Kijiji and Backpage is the medium that we're going to use to reach this marketplace. So you've got the, the message, which we commonly refer to as the ad. You've got the target market that you're, you want to deliver this message to, and then we've got the media. The media is the means that we're going to use to deliver the message to the intended market. So the point that Rick made earlier is we have all of these choices when it comes to media. And your marketing should reflect a layered approach because there is no one media that's going to help you reach everyone you want to reach. And many of our members, when I ask them about media, and they say, well, you know, I do several different things. And when I ask them why, their answer is because every one of these medias that I use makes me far more than what it costs me, than my investment. And that's what we want to figure out for all of you today is, first of all, let's lay out all your choices. Rick is going to show you technically how to do it. And Rick, you're not a big technical guy, right? I mean, you, you figured all. this out on your own. Yeah. And I think the point you're going to make today is this is not difficult. So, and I know some of you are probably more technical than Rick and I. That's a problem there as well. If you're a technical person and you like to go in and mess around with, um, with Craigslist and, and Facebook, uh, we don't want you spending a lot of time doing that. We want you out making money selling houses. Right. Okay, so we're going to figure out the system, and then we're going to delegate the system to someone on your team or your teenage son and daughter or niece or nephew. Okay, or, that's how this needs to work. Or to a scheduler. In fact, the system with, with um, Facebook, Craig, allows you to pre-schedule ads in advance. So, so there's a way you can get some leverage using technology so that you don't have to be sitting there all the time placing your ads. You can sit down. You can set the schedules to run. And down the road, your ads will run as Yeah, perfect. So you test them out, and right. then you build a fence around it. And you know that right. that ad is going to run at a certain time on certain days. And that's something else I'm sure we're going to talk about is uh, when's the best. A lot of questions uh, we, yeah. we get are about, well, when's the best day? When's the best time to run my yep. ads? Uh, how do I set my budget, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, so I get a lot of questions, Craig, from our members as to you know, why are we using Facebook? Like, well, isn't Facebook just for for school, school kids to communicate with. And I, I should clarify this because a few years ago, we were at a super conference. We, we, you know, Craig often has a, a lunch room for those of us on the team to sit and, and spend some time together. And on this one occasion, Craig actually came and had lunch with us instead of going up to his room. 
And Craig, we're, we're all in there sitting and we're talking about lead generation and this whole subject of, of Facebook had come up and I had started to see the odd ad floating through my Facebook page here in, in my marketplace. I'm going to say this is five years ago. And I said, I, I think this Facebook thing is going to be a really great way for our agents to get their message in front of prospects. And, uh, you know, Craig, in, in his almighty wisdom, said, oh, no, no, no. Craigslist is for school kids. It's for setting dates and going to parties. I said, I, I don't think so. He said, well, Rick, you go and find out all about it. And you, you get the straight goods on how this is going to work, and, and you let us all know. And that's sort of where I started working with this. And look what's happened since. These are some amazing statistics that I recently found. Look at the revenue generated by advertising for Facebook versus Google. Okay? So Google has always been the big online ad generating streaming media that people have always believed in. And by the way, Google still is the number one search engine. But look at the revenue for advertising that Facebook is generating. In fact, it's more than Google. And a lot of folks don't realize that Facebook is becoming the powerhouse for online marketing. And interesting statistics, 71% of adults who are using the computer will tell you they're using Facebook. So 71% overall of adults polled are saying they're using Facebook. So in your marketplace, there's a 71% chance that an adult who's thinking of buying or selling is using the Facebook medium at some point in their day. So at the end of the day, in, in terms of making smart business decisions about putting our marketing where prospects are, Facebook makes sense. So we thought today we should talk a little bit about what this Facebook medium is, is really all about. Now I know some of you on our webinar today are not using Facebook and some of you are not even all that computer literate. So I have to say this, Craig, um, you're going to have to learn. The, the computer isn't going anywhere. And when used correctly, it's a great leverage tool that we should be using for our business. Now, for those of you that don't use the Facebook, this is going to be confusing. But for those of you who are, you recognize on the screen, there's your, your standard news feed, news feed page. Now, I just, I just grabbed a screenshot from mine to sort of highlight what floats by over the course of looking at your Facebook page. So let's identify a few things that you'll see on your page daily. You'll see stuff about just interest, general interest. So there in the red box, there's some things going on that, that, well, it's a long story, but Facebook knows what I'm interested in, so they put my interests up there in that corner. There's some advertising. So I happen to grab a screenshot of one of my ads, and then down the right-hand side, there's some more advertising, all of which any member can participate in, and then there's other stuff that people in your network are doing. So that's what floats by on your newsfeed every single day. Now, today, obviously, we're, we're really focused on using this media correctly to generate leads from, from our marketing. So that's, that's what we're going to look at today. We want to teach you how to take this Facebook advertising juggernaut, which is absolutely amazing when you get into it, and turn it into a cash cow for your business. And, and as we said at the outset, we don't want you to waste a whole lot of time. You're, you're going to have to spend a little bit of time testing and learning and getting a sense as to how it works. You're going to want to spend some time studying the data that your ads create and understanding of how well they perform. But remember, what has Craig taught us? As Quantum Leap agents were also stellar testers. Okay, put that in your notes today. We never stop testing the merits of a marketing campaign. Now, some of you do. Some of you come on our program, you run a few ads, they don't work as well as you might have expected, and you give up. I know because I work with lots of you. Look, you've got to have a different attitude. You've got to be willing to look at your marketplace to gain a really good, intimate, working knowledge of what's going on locally and matching up those trends with a marketing campaign. We've given you the best messages to use overall. But you might find yourself looking at a trend locally that you need to make an adjustment on one of our ads for. We're going to teach you how to do that as well. But at the end of the day, 
I want everyone to commit to being a tester the way I did, the way Craig has taught his most successful people to be. And when you become a good tester, willing to look at your data on a regular basis, all of a sudden you know how well your ads perform. And I can't stress that enough. You're going to have all the mechanics in place to see how well your, your domain names draw, plus the Facebook ad manager lets you really clearly understand how well your ad is being accepted by the audience you've chosen to market to. It's very important that you get that. So when I started this program, um, Craig had me look at my ad activity a minimum of one day a week. How many of you are doing that? In my office, Carol and I sat down at, at our desks on Friday morning every single week, and we looked at how the last seven days of marketing had performed. Now, I didn't have Craigslist in those days. I didn't have Facebook. I, I didn't have all these online mediums that did all this for me. In fact, on the original success website um, system, we would ask the, the system to give us the data, and it would take about an hour for the data to be prepared. Everything today is instantaneous. The point I'm making is there is absolutely no reason why you shouldn't know how well your ads are performing. It doesn't matter what medium. So Facebook, the, the minute you place an ad on Facebook, that minute it starts to collect the data. So here's what you could do. Come into the office in the morning, prepare an ad, run the ad, and just after lunch go and see how well the ad is performing. It is that immediate. And that's the feedback you need to know whether or not a campaign should continue with the medium that you've chosen. So anyway, that's a bit of a dissertation there. Okay, we have a, a question here, Rick, uh, from sure. Elizabeth. Elizabeth is asking, uh, she's saying, I don't have a listing. What are the best buyer ads on Facebook? Um, and we'll talk about the best ads in all the different media. But um, first of all, I would say, Elizabeth, the online home evaluation ad, uh, you might look at that. Uh, that's the one at the top that says Chestermere Real Estate Questions. Uh, you may look at that and say, well, that's an ad targeting sellers. Well, that's true, but many of these sellers uh, would be buyers as well. So I know that that's a great campaign for you, Rick. Um, I know uh, Alex um, Malaya here in Newmarket is having great success with the area home sales report. And uh, do we have an example of his there? Yeah, right there. Uh, which one is it? Uh, the top right, I think. Nope. No, that's not it. So many of the many of the campaigns that target sellers are also going to attract buyers. But if you flip back a page, uh, Rick, uh, you'll see in the top left-hand corner it says East Side foreclosures vacant, abandoned, fixer-uppers, here's what you're going to find. You're going to find, usually, the ads that have worked for you in other media will work in this media. Correct. It's not 100% transferable, but it, it's certainly a good place to start. So, for example, when I was, way back when, when I was running ads in the newspaper and I was running um, an online home evaluation, and it worked there, that gave me the confidence to create a postcard with that same message. And then, of course, um, you know, we see it now on Facebook. So that online home evaluation, the area home sales report, uh, work in the newspaper, they work in direct mail, uh, they work um, on Facebook, uh, they work in many, many different places. Okay, so um, I would ask this question, Elizabeth, what what ads are working for you right now when it comes to attracting buyers? What are, what are the best campaigns? And those are the ones that I would start with. And, and um, we, you know, we, we can give you uh, examples of what other members are doing as well. And we, we do do this on Fridays. We, we look at the, um, the ads on the ad clinic. And uh, not only do you get to see the ads, but you actually get to see the results, what their budget was, and um, how many prospects visited the landing page and how many leads they generated and bottom line how much money they made yeah. here's yeah. another question from Paul Paul um, is asking what are the advantages of posting Facebook ads yourself 
versus having a company like Bold Leads do it for you? Well, I, I'm going to be brutally honest here. I, I like the idea of having full control over my marketing. Uh, now, some of you are thinking, well, you're teaching us to, to use leverage, though, Rick and Craig. You should, you know, the message is we should be using people who are pros to get the best results. And I agree. At some point in our business, leverage becomes a real ally. But initially, I think it makes sense, Craig, for all of us to learn how things work. So I know we can get bold leads. We can get success. Maybe Z Buyer. There's a, there's a few companies out there that aggregate leads using as an example, the Facebook or the Google Medium. Sure, we can delegate that to those guys. Now, a couple things you want to take into consideration. Number one, they don't live in your market. They don't have a clear understanding of what's really going on in your marketplace. And even if you try and tell them, you'll find the ads may not quite match up with the trends. And don't send me emails later. I'm not dissing bold leads or anybody else. What I'm saying is there's real value in you sitting down, learning this, understanding how it works. Once, once you get your ads really performing, as Craig said earlier, then you can delegate those ads and you might want to use someone like Bold Leads or, or ZBuyer or Success Website. And the other thing is those companies, Craig, and you taught me this long ago, those companies do not make a living by generating leads. We do. And I think we need to have a real vested interest in what our marketing is doing and how it's performing. So I think it behooves all of us to learn how to do this on our own and really have a strong understanding of what's going on. Well, I've always been an advocate of, of having control of your marketing. That's your, your biggest point of leverage. That's certainly a rainmaker activity. Yep. Uh, just like calling back the leads that you generate is a rainmaker activity. Um, however, we see coaching members delegating all of it away and then you know they're continually paying for leads but and they don't really understand how to generate them themselves they can't really fine-tune it because they're not in control of it and uh, then they abdicate the responsibility of calling the leads to people that aren't skilled and the people that they have calling the leads back are not skilled because who could teach them how to be skilled if the rainmaker isn't skilled at marketing and creating the ads and understanding their business and calling the leads back, it would be impossible to train anyone underneath you how to do what you don't know how to do. Correct. I, I would now, say this too, Craig. I would say this too. These third-party aggregators that we do have partnerships with are very technically proficient. They technically get how all this works online. But are they, are they market savvy? That's always been the question I've had. That's why I've always resisted having somebody else maintain my marketing for me personally. Th well, I, I would look. I, I, sorry, I would look at Bold Leads and Z Buyer and all these other opportunities. I would look at it this way: I would still want to run and control the advertising myself. But the argument for using, say, Bold Leads, is if you're doing everything that you can do, and you hire Bold Leads and bold leads makes you way more money than what the the investment is then you could do both right i mean there's an argument uh there's an i i've asked many of our coaching members this you know they're using um they they have maybe like three or four different idx's they've got this success website uh they've uh they're using bold leads they're using z buyer they um and when i ask them why they do all these different things the answer is well, each one of these things, Craig, makes me far more than my investment. That's a good answer, right? But each one of these highly successful coaching members has an abdicated total responsibility of their marketing. Right. They do their own Facebook ads. They do their own Craigslist ads in addition to hiring these companies to generate leads. Now, you would only need to hire companies like Bold Leads and Z Buyer to help you generate leads if you couldn't generate enough leads on your own. So these coaching members that I'm mentioning fall into that category where their, um, their, their team is, is, is so large uh, that uh, they can handle a lot of leads more than they can generate on their own. 
Okay, but if you're a solo agent, you can probably generate more than enough leads just doing it yourself. Right. However, if you've got a team of eight outside sales agents, all these mouths you need to feed with leads, you may not be able to generate enough leads to uh, to fuel you and uh, seven or eight outside sales agents. And that's when you would uh, when you find yourself in that situation where, hey, I need more leads than I can get on my own. Correct. Then you go and you look at, at where can I purchase leads in addition to what I generate myself. Correct. Correct. So, I hope, Elizabeth, I hope that answers your question. I, I think there is a place for this for a third-party aggregator in all of our businesses, but I, I still think we need to maintain that control over how our ads perform. And on that line, let's make sure we're clear here how this system works. Because sometimes we forget. Sometimes we think that this particular ad that we're running is the lead generator. Well, it's only a, it's only partially that. Remember, the purpose of the ad, and here's some examples that we're looking at. The purpose of the ad is to drive the traffic to a landing page. Now, the Facebook medium lets us see how well the ad is doing that. It lets you see how many times your ad is getting clicked. And the click is the traffic originator from the ad into your specific campaign landing pages and all yeah, of you absolutely the if if you're getting a, if the Facebook ad is causing a lot of clicks causing a lot of prospects to go to your landing page but you're not generating leads we well, can't blame the ad on Facebook the ad on Facebook's definitely doing its job it's it's the landing page right I've got a question here from Alexandra as well she's saying bold leads is limited because they only have certain amounts of agents per zip code and many zip codes are already sold out well Alexandra understand and this is for everyone, bold leads, all they're really doing is running our uh, online home evaluation ad or the area home sales uh, campaign on Facebook. That's all it is. Like, you can do this yourself, right? Now, they may be, as Rick said, more technically savvy than us, but that's what they're doing. They're offering an online home evaluation on Facebook. Well, all of us can do that right now. The only the only caveat to that statement is our Canadian members, Craig, we can't work on Facebook via postal code. In the U.S., our members can work via zip code. That's why Bold Leads sells so many agents per zip code. But in Canada, we don't have that yet. So in Canada, we can work with city, but we can't work with, with postal code yet. It's coming, but we don't have it yet. So let, let's remember that. So for all of you on the call today, hopefully you're working with a success website solution in your business. Okay, and I, I'm sure all of you are. If not, uh, I know Craig would tell you today, just it's a no-brainer, there's a trial, go turn it on, get working. There will be a page for every campaign you want to run in your less branded site. And that's the starting point. Start this project off with Facebook from the less branded perspective. Start it off that way. Send the traffic to your less branded page in your website. Now, if, as Craig said earlier, we're getting traffic from the ad to the landing page and we're not generating leads, we've got a disconnect. You need to tell your coach that. You need to tell the person who's helping you that, man, Craig, I'm getting traffic, but I'm not getting leads. That's fixable. That simply means the message portrayed in your ad is not congruent with what the prospect is reading on your landing page. So we, we need to make an adjustment somewhere, and we, can, and we can do that. That's the troubleshooter. All of you should have a copy of our troubleshooter. If not, send an email to your coach. Make sure that um, you get a copy of the troubleshooter to see why things don't work the way we're talking about them today. But just so we're clear, Craig, just so we're clear before we move on here, the ads job on Facebook or anywhere else is to send traffic over the internet to the landing page to generate the lead. That's that's the job of, of the ad. So let me show you how you can do this. Let me show you how to do this. And it's not that difficult. I, I have to say that. This isn't really all that hard. E even if you're confused by minutiae in, in administration and computer strain, this isn't all that difficult. It's pretty much logic and and common sense. To work with Facebook, there's a three-step process. Okay, 
The first thing is, and this is what we now, recommend. I, mean, I want to make sure everyone's paying attention now because I know this is the part where some of you, especially if you have a high eye personality, your, uh, your eyes kind of roll back in your head and they glaze over because this is not your thing. But look, um, this webinar is recorded. Okay, so you can watch this over and over and over again. But I'm going to suggest everyone pay attention now because there's three steps, one, two, three, and Rick's going to explain, you how, explain to you how to do this. Yeah, so um, if you download this webinar today and you realize it's, it's just been a couple of weeks or maybe a month since Craig and I did this, you may go to the Facebook advertising page and find that it's, it looks a little bit different than what I'm sharing with you today. Craig, Craig alluded to that at the introduction. The Facebook medium, the ad manager, which is what we're going to be using, changes on a consistent basis. It, it's constantly in a, a state of change. So we're doing our best to keep you up to date with the most up to date stuff, but it, it's constantly changing. In the last three months, I've seen two major changes to it. Okay, so three steps. First thing you want to do is you need to build a page. The page is where your ads will reside. Now, some of you are thinking, well, I already have a page. It's called my name. Okay, that's your social page. That's where you fool around on Facebook. That's where you watch your friends' videos or you see your friends' pictures being at the lake on the weekend. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a page that will reflect the real estate market where you are. You're going to create a less branded real estate page to work with. Now you're thinking, well, whenever I go looking for real estate on Facebook in my marketplace, Rick and Craig, there are oodles and oodles of pages. You're right. If you're in a marketplace like Los Angeles or Vancouver or Toronto, New York, Minneapolis, Chicago, you're right. Agents have pages on Facebook. There's thousands of them. Remember, it's our job to bring the audience to the page. Okay, so just because there's a lot of pages locally doesn't mean that you can't have one. How many of you have a website in your marketplace? Your website is one of literally hundreds of thousands of real estate agent websites in your marketplace. So that's not an excuse not to have one. Remember, our job as marketers is to draw the audience into the page. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is connect or choose or create an audience that we want to talk to on a regular basis. And then the third thing is we're going to show you how to bring that audience or engage them so they actually see your ads and, and your posts. So building the page, first step, this is where your ad will reside. Um, the marketing will drive them to either an ad or a post on the page. And because the marketing is so relevant to what's going on or so relevant to their personal situation, as Craig has taught us, they will be compelled to click on the ad, to click on the domain name, and work their way across the internet to your landing page. Now, this may be confusing. I'm not trying to confuse you, but here's how you do this. Here's the top left corner of my Facebook page. Um, yours is probably the same. Notice here I have a choice. It's called Create Page. That's a link. Okay, click it. Click on that page and it will take you to the instruction manual that allows you to actually create a brand new page that you can use in conjunction with your real estate business. Okay? This is not going to be all about you initially. This is going to be a less branded page. And I, Craig, I don't think we need to go into the benefits of marketing, uh, branded marketing versus less branded today. Suffice it to say, everyone should start this project with a less branded page. Okay, a less branded page. So go through the exercise of, of building your page. Choose local business or place. Um, give Facebook the information about you, your business, everything going on. This isn't public information. Okay, fill it all in, and then hit get started. Okay, so now what happens is the page is formatted, and you can go to work and make the page yours. So you'll finish off the profile. You'll add the pictures as it requests. So here's one of my lead generation, less branded pages. Just in case you're wondering, Chestermere is a bedroom community on the east side of Calgary where, where I work. And my longtime partner, Stacy, who's been with me for 
a dozen years, she actually lives right on the lake there. Um, one of the advantages of working with us is she was able to buy a house on the lake. So we do some marketing out in Chestermere. She's a single mom, and this enables her to work in her community and not have to commute into the city all the time. So there's my page for Chestermere, the neighborhood. And yes, in the winter, Craig, there's a dog that pulls the sled across the lake because it's 40 below and it's cold. Continue to follow the instructions. Now, here's something else that's really important that you need to do with your page. And put this in your notes. You know, I, I just I had to put my glasses on there. I thought that was a picture of you at the top. Yeah, thanks. You know, yeah, I see, I see that's a dog pulling the sled. I see that. Yeah. Thanks for that, Greg. <laughs> okay. Hey, I, gotta, I have a quick question, uh, uh, all kidding aside. Uh, Tom, uh, Tom is asking this. He says, Rick, what do you do in Arizona when they re uh, require your ads to be branded? I mean, okay, you're talking okay. about less branded ads uh, on Facebook and a less branded uh, page. Um, and, and my response to Tom was, well, then you place your name, as, your name and your company name as small as you legally can, right? Sure. Yeah, or, so in the case of a Facebook page, once the page is built, you're going to create a post on that page. And the post clearly states who owns the page, your, your uh, real estate agent, the company you're with, your designation, and if necessary, your license. And that post will be on your page forever. Now, I want to talk a little bit about consumer behavior, because this is important. If Let's say, for example, that, that you wanted to go and, and poke around the Internet somewhere and find the value of your home. Let's say, for example, today, Craig, our member wants to go and look up their home on Zillow. You log into Zillow.com. What do you start to do there? You start to funnel through all the filters to get to your area, and then you start to look for your home. So consumer behavior has people wanting to look at local relevant information when they go seeking information. Okay, stick with me here. On your page now, on a regular basis, one or two days a week, you should start to share on your page relevant information about your local marketplace. Okay, think about that. You share relevant information, you, you share local stuff going on, and amongst that, you're going to have ads and posts to generate leads. The prospect is brought to your page through your marketing. It feels local. It feels relevant. It feels like a local resource. They're apt. They're more comfortable and more apt to ask for the home evaluation or the list of properties from a local page than they are for some, from some generic page, and they have no idea where it's coming from. So put that in your notes today. Share local information on your page every other day or every, every, every couple of days a week. When you see a really interesting new article in the newspaper, go to the online version, hit that little share button, and share it to your page. Because now you've got tons of good information on your page that will just solidify the fact that this is a good local resource. But there's your page. It's built. There's what your page will look like that moving forward you'll be drawing your audience into for the sake of generating leads. Okay? Now, you can do it for a zip code. You can do it for a subdivision. You can do it for a city. You can do it for a neighborhood. You could do it for a, a, a let's say you're working in Toronto. You could have a downtown condominium page that only deals with downtown condominiums. You see, you can have as many pages as you want, and the page can be about anything that you want. So let's say you're doing some solid, geo-based lead generation. You're doing a mail-out campaign into the same neighborhood all the time. You could create a Facebook page that works with that neighborhood so that other things you do draws people in and it feels really, it feels really local. So this, this may sound a little confusing, but once you get rolling on this, you'll see, you'll see the value of doing that. So, so there's my advice. So there's just some news articles that I post on the page which lets people see what's going on with that that local that local gesture of your market. And you can get this right off the news, right? Just keep it local. Yeah. You um, sit in you the know, morning and uh, yeah, yeah, it could, it could be uh, uh, local taxes have been cut and how is that going to affect education? Anything right. like that. Right. Okay, right. Lisa has a question. Uh, Lisa's saying, Rick, in the profile, don't you have to add your name? Yes. Yes. You do. 
But believe me, that's not what people are looking at when they get here. If you poke around long enough, you can find out who owns a page. But at this point in time, put it all in there. It doesn't matter. The, the, the page... Well, it's, it's like really like all the ads we run. I mean, that's right. when we run ads in the newspaper, all of us have to have our name, our company name. In California, you have to have your license number. It's there. Correct. We just try to make it as small as we possibly can while still complying with regulations. But if the prospect looks hard enough, they'll, they'll find it. Sure. So what we're trying to do in all of our advertising, you know, knowing that we have to, we have to uh, have that disclaimer of who we are, uh, we're trying to make the benefit in the ad stand out. That's what we want prospects to see. And when we, I mean, that's why I use the term less branded instead of non-branded because you know we can't run totally right. non-branded. Uh, but less branded. Is, is a better lead generation method uh, versus branded. It'll always outpull a, a branded ad sure. uh, because prospects really don't want to talk to a real estate agent. Now, there's, there is a place to promote you and your unique selling proposition, but for pure lead generation, I'll repeat it again, less branded always outpulls branded. Yeah. Yeah, so I, uh, Tom's asking this question. Uh, sorry, Tom's asking this question. Rick, where do you find these beautiful pictures to place on your Facebook page? Uh, on the internet, Google Images. That's where I get them. I just go find them. I mean, that's not difficult. So just just do a search on Google for something beautiful, and as a choice, instead of taking the web, hit images, and and there they are. And um, the images you can't use will have a copyright right in the image. And that's where I get them. I also, a few years ago, at, with Craig's advice, I also went out and purchased a CD that has a beautiful collection of real estate images. And I, I use a lot of those as well. And the, the CD was like $40 or something and um, was, worth, was worth every penny. But we, we should keep moving here, Craig, because we're going to get hung up here. So from the page, now there's the page that we've created. There's some news on the page. Now it's time to, to create a post that will enable us to start the process of sending traffic to a landing page. So this image on the screen now is the image of a post. This isn't an ad, this is a post. So this you do just like you would do on your normal Facebook page. You sit down and you create the post. You all know how to post on your Facebook page. Now, here's a format that I have to tell you we've worked with now for a couple of years it's worked really well. Aaron Kin, a good friend of ours down in Texas and I, have experimented with this format against a few others, and it's worked really well. So it starts off with the domain name. In this case, my domain is www.chestermerrealestatesales.com, same as my page name. And if you click on that later today, it'll just take you to my home evaluation page for Chestermere in my less branded success website then a space, and then our caption. Okay, so the caption is the blurb that you've put in your ad that's compelling to the prospect. Selling soon, question mark. Avoid the imminent market change. Find your true expected selling price here. Now notice, free online home evaluation. Where did that language come from? That language came from 20 years of a proven, tested campaign that has worked for all of us. Just click or copy this link, and there it is again after another space. The other component that you have to pay attention to with Facebook is the visual component. Facebook has, has now turned into a very visual medium. And, and Craig, when we started this, um, Facebook was simply a collection of classified ads. Remember? Little classified ads that ran down the right-hand side of your screen. That's where we started. The downstroke to that was that right-hand column on Facebook didn't show up on devices. It didn't show up on a cell phone. It didn't show up on an iPad or a, you know, a tablet. Um, eventually, Facebook got an understanding of that, and they moved the advertising over into the mainstream news feed. So that's where this sits. So there's there's the post that you put on that page that you've created. Now, the post alone probably won't do anything for you. 
okay? Stick with me here. The post alone, you know, unless you've got a, a huge following on your page, the post alone probably won't do anything for you. To get that following on your page, you have to bring people to it. So at the bottom of the page, there's a button. It's called Boost Post. Now, only you see that. You control the page. You control the posts. When you build this, that button shows up. Now, the post is finished. You now get to choose who is going to be brought to it. Who is your target audience? This is where the science and the fun with generating leads really comes from. So you click on the boost post and it takes you to this screen or one very, very similar. And this is where you choose who are your chosen audience members. So let's go to the right side of this screen, Craig, and you'll notice the audience. People I've chosen through targeting, that's my audience. I've chosen an area called Chestermere and a radius of 10 miles around Chestermere, Alberta. Now guess what? That doesn't include Calgary where I live. That's just Chestermere and its immediate surroundings. The age group I've chosen to market to is 30 to 60, and I've put a budget in here of $20 a day. Oh, pardon me, a total budget of $20, $10 a day. Now this ad is, this ad is probably from late last year or early this year. So there's my audience I've even chosen. People in Chestermere within an age bracket of 30 to 60 and over two days spend $10 a day and bring people to that ad. Now hopefully, as a Quantum Leap agent, I've been able to create an ad that is compelling enough to get the click. Because the click will take them from my ad to my landing page. Now, confusion sets in. Rick, Craig, this sounds like a two-fold process. Actually, it is. Actually, it is. Instead of advertising to bring people straight to our landing page, we're talking to people who are already on Facebook, bringing them to a compelling post, which in turn takes them to our landing page. So yeah, Craig, it is a, it is a two-step process. And I've had lots of emails in the last couple of years from people who don't understand that it's a two-step process. Okay, this really isn't your typical basic pay-per-click like Google. R repeat that again so everybody hears what you're saying. Okay, this process, the boosted post process, is a two-step process. Let's compare it to a Google ad. We place a Google ad with the hopes that it's compelling enough to garner a click from a prospect who in turn lands on our landing page at our website. If that happens, it works perfect. In the Facebook media channel, we're creating an ad for the ad. We bring an audience to our post on our page, and in turn, those who are interested click the page, and then they go to our landing page. Okay, It's a two-step process. Now, you're probably thinking, and, and this was the question Craig asked me a couple of years ago, why would we have a two-step if we can have a one-step? Well, we've proven that the two-step method works really well. We've proven it. I've got lots of data to show that people are willing to follow this system within the Facebook environment to, in turn, eventually get to our landing page. So it's, we're not asking you to guinea pig this or experiment with it. We've, we've proven how well this works. I think our job today, Craig, partially is to convince our members to get on with this and learn and learn how it works. Okay, let's, let's keep going. So there's my audience. Sorry, I should have clicked that as we went. Now, for those of you that are, are now completely and utterly confused, eyes glazed over, looking at eBay, checking your email, we can still use good old Google-style pay-per-click on Facebook as well. Now, let me show you how to do that also. And yes, there is some technical stuff here, but there's a little bit of a difference. So this I'm showing you now is an ad, not a post, it's an ad, okay? Now this ad won't necessarily reside on your page. You're going to create this ad within the realms of Facebook and they in turn are going to take it and actually place it on people's news feeds on your behalf. So this is 
good old fashioned pay per click, just like you do with Google pay per click. This is just a different choice of medium. So let's quickly dissect the ad. It has a caption. The caption's job, like a headline, needs to sell the merits of the ad. So in this case, east side foreclosures, vacant, abandoned, fixer uppers, and troubled properties, click now. Remember, guys, with this particular ad, anywhere the prospect clicks on it, boom, they are sent to your landing page. At the bottom, further details, want a better home deal? Finding the must-sell opportunities or a home needing cosmetic attention is a great way to save thousands of dollars when you buy. Sound familiar? That's language right from my landing page. Begin your search here. There's, a, there's an added button they can click. And what happens when they click this ad is they're taken straight to the landing page. Now, Craig, I'm trying not to confuse anybody, but this is the one-step process you can work with on Facebook. So we've, got, we've now got two solid pieces of ammunition that we can work on the Facebook media that in turn creates the traffic to the landing page. So how do you do this? All right. From your page, and, and you're can going... You, can, can you explain to everybody why Sorry, you Craig? prefer uh, the two-step versus the one-step? Did we lose Craig, Andrea? Uh, I'm still here. Can you hear me? I hear you, Craig. Rick? Rick, do you hear me? I think we lost him, Andrea. Do I don't think... think, lost, uh, I, think I think we've lost Rick. I think so. I don't think Rick can hear us. Rick, we can hear you. Have Rick, we lost you still him? there? I'm here. Can you hear me, guys? Okay. Yep, we uh, we can hear you fine, uh, but you said you couldn't hear us. There's a bad connection somewhere. Okay. All okay, right. Uh, so let yes, me just... uh, Mike, I asked a question. Um, why is it a game that you prefer the two-step method over the one-step? Yep, I've lost. I think I've lost. Too bad. It seems as though we've lost Rick's connection. He cannot hear us, Craig. Um, we can hear each other, so we know it's on Rick's end. Yeah, uh, well, he's using a VoIP connection, which we uh, kind of talked about earlier today. I'm going to go ahead and um, send him a message, see if I can get his attention. Yeah, because he's right now he's probably talking to himself. We've all done that before when we do a webinar. So we'll see if we can get uh, Rick back in here. Uh, Ernest, by the way, has uh, typed in a comment. He says, Rick, great uh, call with you and Todd. Um, uh, do you find the lifetime budget works better versus a daily budget? Okay, so we'll, we'll pose that question to Rick when we get him back here. Uh, now, Andrea, our wonderful operator, she typed in a comment uh, as, as we got into this um, webinar today, and she said, the bold leads question brings up a very good point and most of our members who use success website or bold leads to generate leads say you know I'm not going to come on a webinar like this today because I don't need to know anything about this I just pay someone to do it and then they complain because they have no money for other advertising when they could be doing it themselves and having ultimate control and multiple pillars so, uh, Andrea, you get this, right? We just got to get all of our members to uh, to get on board. Uh, Andrea has been around this for for long enough that she uh, she kind of realizes the mistakes that uh, some of our members make, and it is easier to sometimes see mistakes other people are making uh, than the mistakes you're actually making yourself because. Uh, Andrea, you're not in real estate, but as our longtime operator for how many years now? Uh, going on almost 20 years now. 20 years. So you've been hanging around us for 20 years. So uh, um, I've often said to Andrea that she could uh, do these webinars at this point. Uh, do hey, we guys, can you hear me? This? Yep, there we are. I think we lost you, Rick, and I believe you were probably talking to yourself for a while, but welcome back. I was. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, sorry about hey, that. Hey, it won't, won't be the last time, eh? No, it won't. So wh what's the last thing you heard me say? Uh, well, I was asking you, you were talking about the two-step process and the one-step process. Okay. And right. I, said, so, uh, I, I was asking, why do you prefer the two-step versus one-step? I, I don't know if it's a preference. I don't know if I prefer. They, they both work. They, they, they both work. So we work with both. And um, you know, some, some ads work better with 
good old pay-per-click, and some ads work better with boosted posts. So this is where we test. This is where we look at the matrix that Facebook creates, which enables us to see how well our ads are performing. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's apples and oranges. One isn't better than the other. It's just two methods that Facebook has enabled us to work with. So just try both and work with the one that makes sense. To build a pay-per-click ad, you're going to open up what's called the ad manager. Now the ad manager is available, again, from your personal page down the left-hand side as a link. When you open it, if you haven't opened an account, it will ask you then to open up your account, name, who you are, all that jazz. It will also ask you for a credit card. Sorry, this isn't free. This is pay per click, and that's how Mr. Zuckerberg makes his billion dollars a year. But you have to insert a credit card number so the ad can run. Now, once all that is done, you're going to build an ad. Just like you'd build a Google ad, you're going to build the ad now on on Facebook, pay-per-click. It starts with you deciding what the objective of the ad is, and in this case, on the screen, if you can all see it, I want to send people from the ad to my website, so I choose that. Then, the system asks me to insert my website name. Okay, now, today I've been using the example of my, of my Chestermere real estate sales site, and sorry about that typo there. The .com should be in the box. That's how I had it come up. So I insert my website into the, into the box. Now, there's a pause when you do this because Facebook now needs to go and read your privacy policy. Now, so for those of you who are going to try and do this with your personal site that isn't success or some other site, you may stall here because Facebook is very fussy on, on the privacy things they will work with. They work perfectly well with the success website or the AMS websites. They work perfectly well there. So if you're stalled here, um, I get lots of emails from our members, Craig, who are stalled right here and can't get past that. And nine times out of ten, it's the privacy scenario. So it goes, it reads it, it approves it, and it allows you now to, to do the same thing, choose the audience who's going to see or have access to your ad. So I go through the same process. Okay, I choose my city, my area, my location, all these things so that my ad will be prepared for that group of people that I've chosen. And as I said earlier, at this stage, for our American members, you can choose a zip code. So let's say you're just trying to create evaluations in a particular zip code where you work. And if, if I was in my home in Arizona, I would have 85338 as my zip code for evaluation because that's my zip code at my home in Arizona. So you move through and you strategically choose your audience. And, and again, Craig, this is the testing. This is our testing ground. We're going to see who's most receptive to our, to our ad. And this is where we get to play around a little bit. This is where we get to see which ad with specific demographics works the best. I hope you guys all get this, that we never stop testing when it comes to marketing for leads. We work our way through, and then we choose a budget. Now, the budget. We get this a lot. Images, throw your pictures up there. You can throw six pictures up into an ad, okay? And then you have to pay. So let's back up, Craig, and let's talk budget. So at, at the bottom, you see here you have some choices for budget. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I know I'm going to open myself up for emails later. But if you've got a relatively good-sized audience, you know, 40, 50, 60,000 people, I'm going to say that $5 a day is, is probably not enough anymore. This is a bid process. So at $5 a day, um, what does it cost per click on a $5 a day budget? The system will tell you when you ask it. It will tell you. But there's a bit of math here that you have to introduce yourself to. If Facebook is rec recommending a click of $1.75, a click cost of $1.75, and your Facebook daily budget is $5, just do the math. Even though you've chosen 30,000 people, um, at three clicks, everything goes away. So there has to be a reasonable budget attached to the ad that you want to run. It's the same on Google. A $5 a day budget for a home evaluation ad in some place like Orange County, California, 
um, Dallas, Texas, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Toronto, Ontario, $5 a day probably doesn't even start the engine because those clicks are costing you north of $2.50 a click. So the math alone works against you if you haven't chosen a reasonable budget. Now, Craig, we're going to get this question. What is a reasonable budget? Well, we don't know. This is where you're going to have to test and track and see how long your ad lasts once you've created it on Facebook. And, and by the way, it's all there. Once your ad is created, you go through the exercise of raising your, the nice pictures up and then sending your ad to be approved by Facebook and turning it on. Behind the scenes, it now tracks all the data. So you'll go into your ad manager, you'll click on your ad, and you'll see how well it performed. And that tells you immediately, that's the great thing about direct response, that tells you immediately whether or not your budget was good enough, your audience was big enough, whether or not you created enough traffic to your landing page to have consistent, predictable lead flow. Okay, this is all part of the testing procedure. And I know some of you are glazing over, you just have to jump in and do this a little bit and it'll start to make sense. And don't worry, we're here to help you. All you have to do is reach out to your coach, send me an email, rick at credproctor.com. We're more than pleased to help you get this rolling. And your ad has now been created. So there's, there's, the, there's the, um, the review that you get as soon as you finish building your ad. Everything is there. You then hit that place order button. The ad is then sent into the Facebook monitoring software for approval. And about half an hour to an hour later, you get a pushback from Facebook telling you that your ad has been approved. And at that point, your ad is now live. And when you do that, you've joined the world of lead generation using Facebook. Now, Craig and I talked about this yesterday. We can go really deep into the technical side of Facebook. We didn't see a point in doing that today. We wanted to give you just enough to whet your appetite to get your juices flowing to encourage all of you to go and try this on your own. And I know many of you are working with success. Many of you are working with bold leads. Here's a chance to see how your lead generation using the Facebook medium really does work. And both Craig and I, yeah, and for those of you Platinum members, you want to know how it works doing it yourself. Uh, so to piggyback on that, uh, Rick, there's a, co a comment from Ernest. Ernest says, you know, I pay success website to manage my Facebook ads, and it's not expensive if you, if you have their full website package. However, it's really good to know how to do these ads yourself. Correct. I use success to set up the ads because they build awesome landing pages ju in just a few minutes. Yep. Uh, and then the leads go directly to my success uh, website, CRM, and, and my commissions, Inc., uh, CRM. Uh, but, you know, this is kind of important. Like, you, you want to have control of your business. I would be thinking, what is it that I don't know? I would be trying to figure out how to control as much of my marketing as possible. And then whatever I delegate or whatever companies I hire in addition to my own efforts, at least I would know what is reasonable. Correct. So, 100 so now, correct. Ernest, if you, if you run these ads yourself and you set a budget of X amount, you're going to know what return you can get yourself. So if you hire bold leads or success website and they do far better than you can do on, on, on your own with Facebook, you would be thinking, wow, those guys are, are really good and that's definitely worth uh, the money because I can't seem to generate that many leads from Facebook uh, for that budget. However, right. what if the opposite was true? What if you could generate far more leads yourself at a lower cost by doing it yourself? Then yeah. would you really want to be paying someone else um, another company to do uh, something in a lesser way than you could do on your own. Hey, Craig, I should say I had a coaching call with a member early this morning, and um, on, a, on a monthly budget of $700, he's only generating using Facebook with a, with a third-party aggregator about 10 to 12 leads a month. We, we did the math. We figured out his cost per lead, and I simply said Craig would never accept that. Cost per lead was way too high. So I, I just asked him a few questions about the Facebook campaign. And, and 
unfortunately, he didn't know anything about how it worked. So my encouragement to him today was, come on today's coaching call, download this later, get a sense as to how this works, and get in there and improve it if you want. And that's the point Craig's making here. If you know, look, one of our key leverage points is what? People. Another key leverage point is technology. And yes, we can bring those two things to the table with vendor relationships, but it, as Craig said, isn't it nice to know how all this works so that when you do make the decision to delegate it to somebody else, you know that what they're doing is going to have the right, the right effects for you. So that's good advice. So there's the post, Craig. There's the, the um, ad, pardon me, that we created. And you all know how that works. The prospect comes along, they click on it, and they're taken to the landing page. Okay? So that's what we want to have happen over and over and over again. That's the rinse and repeat effect. So getting a knowledge of how this works, very popular media channel, Facebook, in front of all these millions of people in your marketplace is a really great thing for a marketing real estate agent to do. And I now, again, I want, to draw every, I want to draw everyone's attention, Rick, uh, to how you've personalized uh, your landing page. So, so when people in Chestermere get there, they say, oh, this is, this is for me. They know they're on the right landing page. You're talking a little bit about the, the local marketplace. So it's not a one-size-fits-all. It's not generic. Um, prospects that, that live in Chestermere who click on your ad and go to this landing page, they would be thinking, hey, you know, I'm going to get something relevant here. Yeah. This is, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's got some information about Chestermere, what's happening in the marketplace. This doesn't look like it's a, a, a cookie-cutter uh, site where um, you know perhaps it's a fishing expedition just to get my contact information. Their perception is is I'm going to fill this in because I'm going to get something useful and accurate because this page is clearly all about my hometown here in Chestermere. Correct. Yep. And, okay. And couple I have questions, to tell you. A couple questions here too. Uh, uh, okay, go ahead and then I'll uh, ask the questions. I was going to say I I didn't learn that I didn't come up with that I just learned that from you. You told me to keep things local and relevant, so that's what I do. Okay, uh, Sherry is asking this. Does one have to have a personal page in order to have a direct response ad page? Um, yes. In order to create a business page, you have to do it from within your current Facebook page. To do advertising, d good old-fashioned pay-per-click, the answer is, is no, but you might as well have a page anyway. Even if you want to create a branded page for yourself as a realtor, that will give you access to everything that Facebook has to offer. Look, I know this, Craig. There's lots of our members that, that don't play around with a presence on Facebook. And that's the point you and I made earlier about wasting hours and hours every day playing on Facebook. Good, good for you for not doing that. But you can have a page that's strictly for your business. So I showed you today how to set that up. Next question, one more question, and then we'll, we, we better move on because we're running short of time here. Uh, yep. Next question is from Clint. Uh, Clint is asking, I've heard of a Facebook dark post. Is this what was covered earlier with the choose your audience in the boost post area? A dark post. Okay, I'm, yeah, I've, I'm, never, I'm I've, not I've never heard of that before. Have you? not familiar with that. Sorry, Clint. Send me an email later, and we'll work our way through that. Okay, so that was Facebook. Uh, let's, let's talk about uh, some of the other online vehicles. Okay, so uh, nothing new here, Craig. We all know what Craigslist is. We all know what uh, the online classified world is all about. And for those of you that were holding your breath to get through Facebook, you can let your breath out now. This part's easy. This is the fun part. This is what all of us are used to. Um, as you said earlier, Craig, we, we really did exploit Craigslist in the day for the sake of making money. I, I don't know how else to say it. Well, we got to make. Uh, my my dad was uh, was raised on a farm, and he always uh, says you got to make hay while the sun shines. Sun shines. And we right. certainly did make we hay did. while the sun was shining on Craigslist. It was fantastic. Oh uh, my God! We were yep. we were uh, the fir you know some of the first realtors to take advantage of this free advertising on Craigslist, and it was so good that word got out amongst the realtor community, and all of a sudden there were gazillions of ads from yep. realtors. And then True. Facebook, uh, you know, they, they kept changing the rules and changing the rules. And first they would flag us, then they would ghost us, and then they came along and they said, okay, we're, we're going to remove your ability to have a live link. So we're going to talk right. about, well, how do we make it work then? So how Facebook, do we make it work without a live link? 
Facebook simply wanted to keep their customers on Facebook. You mean Craigslist? You can't blame – you can't – what did I say? You said Facebook. Craigslist. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, that's why I'm, I'm here. I'm here, I'm here to yeah. uh, catch any mistakes you may make. Craigslist, th their mandate was to keep their customers on Craigslist. In other words, they wanted to make their website sticky. That's an Internet term. Keep people on the site. So they took away our ability to drive traffic from the ad to the landing page. It's, it's gone. Now, some of you have sent me emails and said, well, Rick, I'm, I'm still working with a link in my ad. So I often write you back and I say, well, are you sure your ad is showing up on the page? And more often than not, Craig, I get an email back and say, well, you're right. I, I can't find my ad. That's because you've been ghosted. Okay? If you continue to break the rules on Craigslist, they get tired of you and they ghost your account. That means you think you're creating an, uh, an ad. You think you're creating something for Craigslist, but it never shows up live. That means you've been ghosted. Now, that's a whole other discussion, but let me show you how to use these mediums safely and profitably just as, about as well as we used to. And, and by the way, you're going to see a, a sifting and a sorting here, which is what we've designed our technology to do. So Craigslist, your ad should be under housing and real estate for sale. You've heard us say this before, not under services. Remember, the typical prospect is not out hunting for a realtor. They're simply looking for houses if they're buying or buyers if they're selling. Okay, so same thing with Kijiji. Now, Kijiji, for those of you in the U.S., is a Canadian site, very similar in nature to, to Craigslist. Now, it, we can still run with a hot link in Kijiji, but we have to pay for the link to be hot. But your, your ad should be in the same place, under real estate, under homes for sale. Some of you are using uh, eBay classifieds. Uh, that's the, uh, the American equivalent of Kijiji, but same place, houses for sale, same thing with Backpage. A lot of our East Coast members, Craig, use this medium called Backpage. Same place, real estate for sale in your city and away you go. Okay, now let's talk quickly about creating a compelling ad. Now this is nothing new and I want everybody to remember this review. What gets the click into your ad? Some of you will say, well, it's, it's, my, it's my wordsmith ability. Well, it might be. Okay, here's how classified online ads work. They start with a headline. When you sat down this morning and, and read the paper and had your coffee like I did, how did you scan through the paper? Well, you went page to page. You looked at the headlines of the various articles that were going by you, and you read the article that had the most compelling headline. So, first thing I want everyone to focus on is, is, is breaking out of the normalcy, breaking out of the box, and creating a silly, compelling, a crazy, compelling headline for the ad. As you always say, Craig, the headline's job is to sell the rest of the ad. So, look at the left-hand side for Craigslist, easiest ones to see. The typical headline on a Craigslist ad is what? Square footage, location, bedrooms, price. Okay, so a good collection of those properties right there fall into that category. In the eyes of the prospect, pretty much white noise. They all look the same. Nothing really compelling there that, that garners attention into the prospect's reticular activator, which in turn creates the click. So, good piece of advice here is create a super compelling headline for your ad. And we've been telling our members this for years, Craig. You've got to have a, a headline that absolutely draws the reader in and compels them to click on it to get into the ad. So here's what I'm talking about for headlines. There's some examples, some examples of headlines that really grab the attention of the reader. Okay? They're emotional. Get away from the technical feature-driven headline and create an emotional descriptor in your headline. Emotion trumps everything when it comes to selling real estate. If you haven't figured that out yet, rethink what you're doing with headlines because emotion will trump everything. So there's some emotionally driven headlines that will do a better job of garnering the interest of the prospects versus the technical bedrooms, square footage, and price headline. So here's an example. Here's an example of an ad 
that one of our members created and, and struggled with to get leads. And I've used this example before, but Craig likes this example, so we're going to use it again. Let's start with the headline, attention renters, then some exclamation marks, and then the rest of the headline, detach house, less than $1,600. Okay, so the headline itself is a little cryptic. Not a, not, it's not clearly understood. And then down in the bottom, you can see in the caption, it's, it's all feature and technically based. Attention renters, detached house, less than 1600 monthly, why rent when you can own, on and on it goes. So our member sent this to me, the fellow that I was working with, and said it had been up for three or four days. And this is Kijiji. The little box in the bottom right-hand corner tells you how many people have visited the ad. Now, if the visit is keyed in because a headline click took place, 53 people in Craig's market in the GTA saw this ad for a house under $1,600 a month in a market where the average selling price is close to $700,000, this should have been a gangbuster of an ad. Only 53 visits in about a week. So we said, Rick, can we, can we fix it? Can, we, can, we, can you help me make this ad better? So my first order of business was to create a headline that simply made more sense. So I did. So there's, there's the ad. Start with the headline. Help. Huge discount must be sold by January 31st. So this was, this was last year. Now we come down into the caption of the ad. Same pictures. Beautiful detached home. Please bring offer ASAP. Quiet, no traffic location, gleaming hardwood floors, stainless appliances, romantic fireplace, blah, blah, blah. It's emotional. Now, here's what I want you to look at, the visits. So I tested this in my marketplace, because I have Kijiji where I am, and in less than 12 hours, I was able to generate 200 visits to the ad. And I attribute a lot of that to the fact that the headline was better. So that's just the value of a better quality headline in your ad. And I remember, Craig, when you took me through classified advertising, you, you beat it into my head that the headline had to be compelling enough to get people into the ad. So a little, quick little lesson there on working with your headline. For those of you working with the online classifieds, we have some material that we can send you. Send a note to your coach. We've got a, a good stock of material we can send you about creating headlines, We've got some themed headlines we can send you. All you have to do is ask your coach to send it over. Now, the body of your ad on Craigslist, Kijiji, all these, all these sites, it has to be about a property for sale. Your ad has to be about a property for sale. If you run an ad on Craigslist today offering a list of homes or a report on the 27 essential tips to sell your home faster and for top dollar, you will be flagged. End of discussion. Your ad has to be about a house for sale. Okay, so let it look as if it's about a house for sale. Look at my ad. Look at the last two lines in my ad. After I've talked about this house for sale, I offer a list of properties, all available under $1,600 a month. So while the ad, to keep Kijiji happy, looks as if it has that narrow appeal, that we're trying to eliminate in our business model. In fact, it has a very wide appeal because we're offering a list of properties in this particular market sector that are very attractive to anybody looking. So let that be the dominant theme of your ad. It will look like a house for sale. There'll be something in the ad about a house for sale, but then we make the offer of an entire list of properties in that sector, in that price range, in that subdivision, whatever the ad is about, and the wide appeal is what really starts to generate the lead. Now, how do we get the lead from these online classifieds if we can't work with domain names anymore? Well, let's hit ourselves over the head with the logic hammer, Craig, as you always say. What does Craigslist want from us in the ad? They want a phone number. How many of you work with a hotline? How many of you have taken advantage of the pre-recorded library and all the stuff that we've built in to the hotline system. Okay, pre-recorded messages that a pro prospect calls, listens to, and is compelled to move forward and ask for more. 
okay that's the number you put in your ad now I've enhanced some of these just to give you a sense as to how you need to put your your hotline in there but this is how you're going to generate leads from the ads that are classified online you're going to use the phone number that they want your hotline and a pre-recorded message so there it is 1-800-123-4567 kick in the ID 1124 now Craig some of our members are thinking well no one is ever going to call my hotline from an ad online possibly true but here's what I'm going to suggest technology in our world has a sole purpose of sifting and sorting through all the prospects and allowing us to see firsthand the most qualified the prospects we only want to work with I'm going to suggest that there's some truth to your thought that we're going to get less traffic to our hotline than we used to get to a landing page very true but I'm okay with that if I don't have to go through as many people to get to a good quality buyer or seller lead my technology has done its job and I'm perfectly fine with that what if you got one or two leads a week from an ad like this that turned into business what if you could do a dozen deals a year from a free ad like this and a, and a hotline that costs you forty nine dollars a month and those dozen sales generated a ten thousand dollar commission each you would be all over the hotline where there's the math you can work with the advertising is free the hotline is very very inexpensive what's your average commission here's the here's the question can you afford not to do this my answer is no you can't you got to do it you've absolutely got to be using this medium for free to not only generate leads but test your market with your ads to see which ads generate the most response now here's another one seller says help sell quick beautiful rancher double garage safe private yard vaulted ceilings stainless appliances granite counters on and on it goes totally emotionally driven number three of 14 on the Granada May pre foreclosure list get your personal copy of the list call now order here there's the number there's the ID we have a pre recorded script for you to use flip it into the mailbox let the calls come in and generate the leads you won't get flagged you won't get ghosted you'll have other agents who don't like what you're doing that goes hand in hand with the online classified world but look there's lead generation using a free online medium and you all want to do online advertising here's how you can do it for free okay so follow this format and you'll quickly see that you can generate leads um, quickly and predictably okay so there's just some more examples of of what you can be doing to generate your leads now if you're using the AMS system and somebody calls in listens to a script and leaves a message behind here's what you get on your computer right you all know this here's the uh, notification that you get now in the old days this was all it used to generate the AMS system doesn't stop here though there's another scenario that takes place for the prospect and that's this if they're calling from a smartphone an iPhone uh, a, a Samsung phone if they're calling from a smoke a, a smartphone the instant they make a call the AMS system recognizes it's coming from a smartphone and sends a text back to the smartphone Are you with me the prospect who's called your hotline number now gets a text back with a link in the text there it is all they have to do is touch the link and guess what they are online on your mobile website this is ingenious okay you all have access to this system are you using it it's a real simple question if you want Craigslist to be online again here's your opportunity so if you're not doing this if you're not using the landing pages that we've created to work in conjunction with your hotline you're missing out on a great opportunity to generate leads so here's a number write this in your notes try this later triple eight seven three one zero three seven seven the ID to use is one two three four just just test it and you can see for yourself how all this works but that enables us not only to be online again Craig with Craigslist but enables us to generate leads using the hotline which some of you think is only for print marketing it's not true here's another great way to generate to generate leads 
So, so there's how we can work with Facebook. There's how we can work with the online classifieds, and there's how we can really put our 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 hotline to work generating leads. So good webinar today, I think, Craig. I really think today was a good webinar. No, we're getting uh, some good feedback here, and I appreciate all your time. I tried not to interrupt you here because I know we need to get through all this, and we are yep. running out of time. But, uh, yeah, we're getting some, some comments here. Alexandra, for example, just said great webinar. Um, so, look, um, we, we want you to experiment this with this, this as much as you can yourself. Uh, Rick is, is offered to help you out if you send him an email. Uh, of course, that's why you have a one-on-one -on -one coach here. One-on-one -on -one coach can help you as well. We're going to do more training on this. Every Friday, as you know, we, um, we look at ads. So uh, you should be submitting your ads on the ad clinic every Friday morning. And uh, we, will, um, we would like to know where you ran the ad. Uh, sometimes it's obvious. Sometimes it's not. And uh, what you spent, what your budget was, and, of course, what your results were. Right. We're going to help you optimize your response. But lead generation is the engine of your business. So you, you need to take responsibility for this. It is definitely a rainmaker activity. And as I said at the beginning of our webinar, so was calling the leads back. But too many of our members, and it's obvious even to our operator, Andrea, um, Andrea gets it. Rick, uh, we see it all the time, where um, our members abdicate responsibility in what comes to their marketing and abdicate responsibility when it comes to following up the leads, calling the lead yeah. back. Big mistake. Maybe, Craig, the biggest mistake we see. It, how can you abdicate something to someone else, train them to do it, if you yourself haven't gained the skill? What are you going to pass on? Look, if, if, if I went to the race car track and someone standing in line said to me, Rick, would you teach me how to drive the race car? I'd, I'd say I'd love to give it a shot, but I don't know how. That's the same thing as abdicating your follow-up to someone else if you can't do it. You'll only pass on your bad habits. Get good at this. There's no reason for you not to get good at these things. You've got Craig. You've got a resource library at the coaching website, and I've, I'll go on record, that has never had more material available to our members than it does today. The group of members, Craig, we're working with now has the richest resource of your program that I have ever seen. Our coaches, we have an absolute unbelievable group of coaches that you should be drawing on not just for your session every now and then consistently communicating with your coach you know we've had members over the years who do not become fully engaged in our program we've met them I've done exit interviews for years of why people are leaving well didn't work for me you know it just wasn't the way I work well what do you mean you don't want to succeed in real estate let me talk to you about our program guess what I learned they didn't come on webinars they didn't communicate with their coach. They didn't take advantage of the expertise that is available. I well, and and the, big, the biggie is this. Here, there's a very direct correlation uh, to those that continue to come to the super conferences and those that are successful. I mean, it's a warning sign. When we see a member not come to a super conference, they're oh, disengaged. Yeah, we just know they're on their way out. You know, uh, speaking Craig, of that, we've got, we've got a bunch of conferences coming up, and uh, – this is where we get into the weeds a little deeper here. You know, we yeah, we yeah. want you to attend uh, the training sessions. Not only do you get to hear from us, but you get to meet our very top members. That's who comes out to the conferences over and over and over again. These webinars are great and everything, but nothing beats sitting for three days straight with your cell phone off uh, in a room with hundreds of super successful realtors successfully using our system. Correct, correct. Look, so I do those hope of that you, uh, we'll, we'll see everybody here at our upcoming super conferences. Yeah, I mean, many of you who are coaching members think that, um, well, I've, I've been, I, I don't need to go again. Our most successful members, members making north of 2 and $3 million a year will tell you the, the correlation between their success and their revenue, the, the common denominator, is continual attendance at the super conference. So our admonition to you is don't just come and, 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 and do it once. Continue to come back. That's why I put on the page there, number two, be a fully engaged member, fully engaged in this program. 
create a network of friends, create a network of learners, of testers, of marketers. Become a lifetime member of our program, um, and you will have the greatest success in real estate that you can imagine. And it's, it, you're thinking, well, Rick and Craig, they always say that, life-changing, blah, blah. You know what? Just come, shake hands with people who will tell you why their life changed when they found this program. I'm one of them. If you ever doubt if this program changes lives, then my challenge to you is at the back of the room at the next super conference, you come up and you ask me, Rick, how did this program change your life? And I will tell you, and I will show you how it also can change your life if that's what you want and if that's what you need. Yep, we've been doing this for a long time, and I'll repeat it again. Those that make the most amount of money with our program attend not just all the webinars, but they attend all the conferences and all the the face-to-face the -face training sessions. Uh, those are the agents that are the most successful. And the agents that are the least successful, guess what? They don't do that. Uh, they skip some of the webinars, uh, but uh, the main mistake is not showing up at the super conferences and, and uh, mixing uh, continually with the top agents. And when you come back to the conference, of course, as a coaching member, you're not coming back to the same conference. You're um, going to be in the platinum room with uh, all the members uh, that have been involved in the program, many of them for many, many years, some of them for 10 or 15 years. Now, Frank is asking this. Um, I got to the webinar late. Please repost or replay. Frank, we always record every webinar we do, including this one. So this webinar, along with all the other coaching webinars we do, will be posted on the coaching website later today. Anyway, we are out of time. I want to thank um, everybody uh, for being part of the program. I hope to, uh, to see each and every one of you at our uh, super conferences coming up. And Rick, uh, most of all, I want to thank uh, you and Andrea for doing such a great job here today. Our pleasure, Craig. Anytime. All right, everyone. We'll go sell some houses, and uh, we'll talk to everybody soon on our next uh, session. Uh, take care and have a great day. That concludes today's webinar. Thank you.